Folks, one thing when you get older, you begin to lose your hearing. What? Which I don't really care about because I only have, you know, I have two areas of interest anyway. They are Libya and Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I don't really care about politics and other matters. Um, but uh, I am frustrated when I can't uh, hear somebody's name or somebody's telling me something. And, and I'm always reminded of the old man uh, who wanted to rake leaves in his backyard, but he couldn't find the rake. So he hollers up to his wife on the deck and he shouts, where's the rake? And his wife says, why? And the old man is really getting frustrated. He says, I need the rake. So his wife goes, and the old man says, what? And the wife says, I left it behind the bush. <laughs> A material. <laughs> oh, this is a sophisticated crowd. <laughs> the more sophisticated, the better that particular joke does go over. Anybody here ever been to Katoomba, Australia, north of Sydney, in the uh, Blue Mountains? There's a chance that somebody here has. Yeah. Oh, that's pathological liars there. <laughs> has anybody really been there? This is a very, very cosmopolitan crowd. <laughs> I did a show there uh, two years ago with Van Dyke Parks, the guy, the guy who orchestrated the cello on the Beach Boys song, Good Vibrations. And uh, we played Katumba. Afterwards, a guy comes up with his big ZZ Top beard. And it's a very eccentric town. And he says, uh, Kinky, I'm, I'm Yui. I said, hi, Yui, how are you? He says, no, not Yui, Yui, U-W-E, I'm German. And I said, well, you know, Yui, uh, the Germans are my second favorite people. And my first is everybody else. <laughs> no. No. Uh, but far be it from me to say that the Germans do not have a sense of humor because they do. Now they're pretty bipolar. And I know a lot about bipolarness because this tour, 28 shows in 27 days, uh, which was originally, I believe, kind of a, a Willie Nelson idea. He doesn't do it now, I notice. He takes a lot of time off. But, uh, but working every night without a break. Uh, and what that will do after, you know, after you've done this for a dozen shows or so, um, you're running completely on adrenaline, and you have, at times, almost a Judy Garland-like rapport with the audience. <laughs> I haven't noticed that this evening. But it's, uh, uh, no, it's a, actually, I, I do feel kind of a Judy Garland-like rapport with the audience, and it's not a healthy thing. <laughs> So I was uh, defending the Germans, just saying that they seem to know who the significant Americans are. They don't care about the important Americans, you know, like Obama or Rick Perry or <laughs> Donald Trump or Justin Bieber. Or they, they don't care about those people at all. They care about Graham Parsons or Warren Zevon or Levon Helm. Uh, they care about I think they care about Van Dyke Parks, Kinky Friedman, um, Van Gogh, and Jesus Christ. Uh, they care about people who never quite made it in their own lifetime. And uh, they see that those people are significant. Um, now, they do have this, uh, Hunter Thompson's another guy they love. Uh, they love Robert Mitchum. There's a book out now called uh, <coughs> The Crazy Never Die, a German book, which is selling very well over there. And it's all about Robert Mitchum, Hunter Thompson, Abby Hoffman, and Kinky Friedman. It's ridiculous. But it's, you know, that's Germans like that stuff. Uh, 
And they've got a real sense of humor. They really do. There was a, a young road manager, a German kid. And this was uh, my second tour of Germany. And we, we had just finished 15 shows. We were at Hamburg. And the next night, we had to be in Paris. So I asked the, the, the kid how far it was from Hamburg to Paris. And he says, oh, it's probably about a five-day march. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. You know, pretty good. Was I talking about? Australia. Let's send this out to uh, to Mark and Marianne, uh, who uh, came from Washington, uh, not the bad Washington, the good Washington, and uh, we'll send this out to Mark and Marianne. You uppity women, I don't understand why you gotta go and try to act like a man. But before you make your weekly visit to the shrink, you better occupy the kitchen, liberate the sink. Hear that, folks? Occupy. I was way ahead of my time. <laughs> Get your biscuits in the oven and your buns in the bed. That's what I to my baby said. Woman's liberation is going to your head. Get your biscuits in the oven and your buns in the bed. Early every morning you're out on the streets, passing out the pamphlets to everyone you meet. You gave up your maiden form for Lent. Now the front of your dress has an air scoop bend. Every single great man who's ever come along They had a little woman always telling him he's wrong Eve said to Adam, here's an apple, you hoss And Delilah defoliated Samson's moss Get your biscuits in the oven and your bones on the bed That's what I to my baby said Woman's liberation, it's going to your head Get your biscuits in the oven and your bones in the bed Mean-minded harpies are breaking all the laws, tearing up the girls and burning up the bras. Now the air is dirty and the sex is clean, and your coffee makes my hair turn green. So damn emancipated in your mind and your body, am I gonna have to cancel all your lessons in karate? If you can't love a male chauvinist, you better cross me off of your shopping list. Get your biscuits in the oven and your buns in the bed. That's what I to my baby said. Woman's liberation, it's a go to your head. Get your biscuits in the oven and your buns in the bed.